Hello everyone, we're going to undergo a very sensitive mission here called Operation Bios Recovery. As you may know by now, my cat may or may not have accidentally bumped the keyboard in previous Corset updates. But in any case, I'm going to show you how to handle the Bios installation and extraction. No Bios left behind. So I'm going to go into uh, my recent Corset update from yesterday. And you're going to notice this KM Master BIOS Module 328.18. If you go inside it, all the way into the root here, all the BIOS that you need for the various systems will go right into the system folder. And I copied it over into my user mods folder for Hashi 2 ce Community Edition. Same thing, Master BIOS Module. And I currently have no BIOS in here. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is uh, just simply power on my system. By powering on the system, it'll maintain a proper Clovershell connection. By doing this, you have the ability to do an FTP connection as well as properly install modules via the module uninstall install tab. So right now I'm going to go to install extra modules. Now I'm going to go to my master BIOS module here, custom, and it'll show a little readme as well as the various cores that you may or may not need BIOS for. In the event that you got one of my previous installations that my cat may have bumped the keyboard on, I'm going to show you how to safely extract said BIOS installations. So right now I have this little text document open. FTP text and I have FileZilla program open we'll do this from scratch here I'm gonna open up FileZilla right from the get-go here and let me temporarily minimize that then I'm gonna go into Hashi2 I'm gonna click open FTP client you're not gonna need to do this once you see the information I'm about to transpose onto this text file. And I'll make it available for you guys and gals. But by opening it, it'll try to pull up your internet browser instead because it doesn't know what to point to. But I'm simply going to copy and paste this right here. Just watch what I do. That is the IP address that points right back to your own computer. It's a loop IP address. That is going to go inside your host here. So I have that in my host. For a username, you're going to put root. For password, you're going to put clover. Then I'm going to quick connect. I have a connection. Now I'm simply going to copy this host here to the text file. We have host equal the IP address. Then the username root password clover and you just need to remember this and you'll be able to do many many things and as well as extract your bios so what I'm going to do right now is point to my folder here I'm going to go to my computer to my hashi directory And I have a little bit of a mess here, but I'm going into my hashi 2 ce directory, my user mods folder. Then I'm going to go into my master BIOS module right here, etc. System. So I have it right there in the root of the system folder. Then I'm going to go onto my FTP here to the right, etc. Libretto system. And I'm simply going to highlight all of these and drag and drop them right into the system folder on my computer. You can additionally delete your BIOS the same way. FTP is fantastic for this purpose. Now we're going to go look into that folder here that I have on my hard drive. Look, all the BIOS are now there. How awesome is that? So they're all copied over. Everything's said and done. Everything's nice and easy here. And then I can just open up Hashi2 
And these bios will not really change over time. I mean, I will let you know if any bios change as far as I put new cores in there for Amiga and such. But we're just going to go into the bios module here. And I simply go to my master bios module. And you can do this via the transfer folder on your USB as well or install it as an HMOD. And I would simply click OK. And here we go. We're installing all of the BIOS that my cat accidentally bumped the keyboard on. We're all good and done there. Additionally, there's another way you could do this. If you go into the modules, install extra modules. And this is particularly of interest for USB host users. If you install this very nifty thing by Dandaman827 called External RegArch, it will literally make a complete replica of your libretto folder from your internal NAND flash memory onto your flash drive. So I'm going to my flash drive. And let's pop that in real quick. And there are two ways you can install HMODs via USB host. You can do it with Hashi2CE. And the other way is I'm going into the directory here. If you go into Hashi here, you can install HMODs just by doing this. You can simply make a transfer folder. This is one way of doing it. If you use Hashi2CE to do the modules, they're all going to install to your internal NAND flash memory. But if you install this Dandaman external RetroArch, it'll do something completely different. It'll actually install them to your flash drive instead. So what I would do is basically take that HMOD. And I'll give a prime example of this. And you can install it via Hashi2CE or you can do it via the transfer folder. Either way, when you plug in the flash drive to your OTG device and power it on, it's going to transfer all of them over. But I'm going into my core set again. And I'll show you the exact file you'll need. And I don't typically use this. I actually prefer to have my HMODs in my internal NAND flash memory since they run a lot faster that way, along with saves. But obviously, if you're on the NES Classic, you don't have much of a choice. You have to have the saves folder. But I'm going to the bottom of my core set. External RetroArch. And I would simply copy it into the transfer folder. And once I plug this into the system and power it on, it'll install everything from my NAND flash memory libretto folder over to the flash drive. And I'll give you an example of what this looks like. Hexy libretto. This is all the stuff from my NAND flash memory here. And look, I have my system folder with all my BIOS. So I can simply make a copy of that, just like this. Go to my Hashi2CE directory, user mods folder, master BIOS module, and I'll just overwrite the entire system folder. Just like that. And it won't take up the same amount of memory. I have extra stuff in there that is not pertinent to the normal BIOS you'd run with the systems. This is just a primary example. It takes up approximately 18 megabytes if you have all of the BIOS that you would need for the dozen systems or so that need them. So it's 18 megabytes in essence, even though I have 45 megabytes there, because I'm installing something else that is not practical for use right now. But it's all, they're all here right now. We're all good to go.